Mayong Aga. Is that right? Very good. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Thank you so much for coming to the family, camp, family Bible Camp. This morning we are going to continue with the topic, What Does God Think? Remember, we stopped talking about the schedule of the children and we asked the question, how many of us know these things that we can teach it to the mothers? How often a child should eat? What does God think about feeding babies? You remember that topic? All right, you remember we talk about the schedules every two and a half hours or three hours? One thing that I did not tell you that is very important to remember is how does, mother, does the mother know that the baby, baby needs to change the schedule? Not two and a half hours anymore, but three maybe. Not three maybe, but three hours and a half. How do you know you need to change? Anybody knows? All right, this is the point. Children, as they grow, their belly is going to change. First, because of the digestive system is changing, right? And then number two, their bellies are getting bigger. Then the time of digestion is going to be different. Therefore, you have to know when it's time to change it. In the same way, if you eat too soon, your food is not going to be digested properly, and the babies will happen the same. How do you know? If your baby is eating right now, breastfeeding, and the baby spit out, how will you see the milk coming out? Of course, it's going to be the same way. If it's curdled, it means it's old, because it's already digested. If it is just like the milk he's eating, and there's no smell into it, it means it's just eaten. It's milk from right now. If the baby is feeding, and the milk come out, and it's smelly, and curdle, like cheesy. That means it's food from old time. What does that mean? The food is not yet digested. Therefore, you know that the time for the digestion is too soon. You have to space it now. So instead of giving the baby two and a half hours, as my Kevin started, for example, we change it then to three hours because he was already needing more time for the digestion. You see that? then you will change it. And of course, at the beginning, it may be a little difficult for the mother or father to, you know, keep the schedule properly because it's the first day that you are going to be changing that. But approximately three weeks to one month is when you will see that change needed. By the time of one year old, the baby may, by God's grace, be able to eat three meals a day by one year old. Three meals at the time of breakfast, time of lunch, and time of supper. By the time the child is two years old, he may not necessarily can have two meals if it's needed or if it's okay. But not before two years old. But any child approximately a two-year-old could be okay with two meals. Now that changes with every child because every child is different. Maybe the constitution, physically speaking, may not be uh, the right one, so may need a little more nutrients and three meals may be necessary. But that is just in general. So now let's go for other questions, questions that are very important when we talk about children. We talk about obedience, now let's talk about what do I do if a visitor comes? Now let me tell you, we talked yesterday about the benefits of homeschooling and there's one question that came up, you remember? The children don't like to be with parents. You remember that? Okay, now we're going to see the why from God's word. Okay, from His mouth. So you can see it. What do we do when a visitor comes? First option. Tell my children to go out to play. So if someone comes home, they say, oh, go out so you can play. Now the second option says, let him decide what he wants to do. Which one do you think is the most common option in this world or in the Philippines? He says number two. Somebody else? All right, nobody wants to say anything. <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> Once you start thinking a little deeper into these details and then you ask the Lord what He thinks, then you start thinking, hmm, I have not been doing what is right. And that's okay. We are all here for what? Learning. 
Do you want to know what your mama and your father, your relatives used to do? That's everybody knows what's that. We see it in the society. And most of the time, what you see in the society is not right. We'll see. Do you want to know what God thinks about this? What does God think about this? Now, before I read the paragraph, I want to recommend you and write down the quotes and the things that we are giving because you need to study them later. One person came to me one day and asked me what was wrong with the phrase, you are so cute, and we were talking about the issue, and this one may give you a little more light about it. So write it down so you can go and study for yourself. First, I recommend you reading Ezekiel 28, when God talks about Satan. And God says, Give children but little notice. Now, if you read the Spirit of Prophecy, many people are thinking that God contradicts Himself and says, that's not right. You are not the one who judge God, let me tell you first of all. And second, whenever you read the Spirit of Prophecy, you have to be careful, because God will never contradict Himself. He's not going to say one thing in one place and say another one in another place. So whenever He said something that for me seems to be contradicting, that's a point of prayer, because that means I do not understand God's ways. Now, let me put it this way. If I say right now to you, pay attention to the preacher, what does that mean? What does that mean? You have to see what I'm saying, right? Okay. Now, but if you say, for example, don't pay attention to the cars, what does that mean? Don't look at the cars. Pay attention here, right? If I tell you, pay attention to your children's need, what does that mean? If they have eaten, if they have clothing, if they are warm, if they are well fed, if they have all the nutrients they need in their diet. You see what I'm saying? Now, question. is the same kind of attention. Is the same kind of attention? No, one is for speaking, paying attention to the preacher, and the other one is what? The needs of the children. Do you see the difference? Can anybody see the difference? Someone that can say, I see the difference. Okay, there's one hand. The rest, we don't see the difference? Okay, let me try it again. See if I can explain it better. If I say to a child, pay attention to me, I'm talking to him. That means I want him to listen to me, right? If I tell you, you have to pay attention to your children's needs, that's different. That's not paying attention to what that they are saying, okay? When God is saying, give li children but little notice, it doesn't mean don't take care of your children. You see the point? So, hopefully we can understand what God says. Let's read it now as we see that. Give children but little notice. Let them learn to amuse themselves. Do not put them in exhibition. Now, let me tell you what happened in my home. Someone called me one time and said, Dr. Bute, I want Kayla to have a special song here in front. And I said, no, sorry, but she will not be able to do that. And they asked me, of course, I explained to them why, but I did not allow that. Why? Because I know my Kayla. I know my Kevin. I know my Carmiel. And I know it's not going to be profitable for them to do it. God says, do not put them in exhibition. You have seen, we allow them to be here in front, even in TV, because we have all in family. But I don't allow them to be by themselves, in front, never. Why? Because we have to be careful with them. It's our responsibility. And God says, do not put them in exhibition. So be careful what we do as parents. Then he continues saying, 
before visitors as prodigies of wit or wisdom, but lead them as far as possible to the simplicity of their right childhood. One great reason why so many children are what? Forward. What else? Bold. What else? Impertinent. Now, let me ask you a question. Do you see children like that today? Very much so. Atevita testified for it. She went right ahead. <laughs> you see it every day, brothers and sisters. Children are bold, impertinent. They cut you when you are talking to someone else. They are irrespectful, disrespectful. Why? Now let's read why God says it this happened. Number one, because we exhibit them. He said it already. Number two, let's see. It says there, one great reason why so many children are forward, bold, and impertinent is they are what? Noticed and praised too much. And there's smart, sharp saying repeated in their hearing. Let me give you an example. This is clear and this reality. Real world. This is not Mars or Jupiter. This is Earth. Right? Somebody comes and gather here, for example, like us, and two persons come together, and I have my children, and they talk to my children and talk to me. And if somebody comes, and they talk to my children, they don't come talk to me. Why does that happen? Because in our society, Satan has been used in the society to pay too much attention to the children, so the pride raised up as an in Ezekiel 28, because of thy beauty. You study yourself. Pride raised up, and then what we have? Bold, impertinent, forward children. Endeavor not to censure unduly, nor to overwhelm with praise and flattery. Now you understand why God says that we should not be using these kind of phrases like, you are so cute, you are so adorable. This is idolatry, number one commandment. We have to bring out our children from that. Now let me tell you what I have taught my children so you can have a tool whenever these things happen. If you have children, or you are going to have, or if you don't have, don't use these phrases. Now you know that the enemy may be using you for something that is not good. I may have done it even myself before. That doesn't mean we are in this, I'm perfect, never done it, no. I learn and I don't do it anymore. So let's stop doing it. What I do in my home that I have taught my children to do so we don't have problem with that is this. If someone comes and says, you are so cute, what do you have to say? My children know already. What do you have to say, Kevin? Only when I obey. Where does God say beauty comes? From the heart. And it means obedience. Therefore, whenever someone comes and says, you are so cute, the first thing they have to say, and I remind them, is what? Only when I obey. And for that, I don't even allow them to say praise God, because that's not the point. You're not going to say praise God because I'm beauty. You know? No, 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 no. You are going to say the right thing. The right thing is, only when I obey. If someone comes to say, you are adorable, sorry, only God. Then it says there, Satan will all too soon sow evil seed in the young hearts and you should not aid him in his work. I would please request something right now if someone is whistling to stop. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Satan will all too soon sow evil seeds in their young hearts, and you should not aid him in his work. We 
are missionaries from the enemy when we do what is displeasing to God. Please, understand these things. When I used to do it and I learned, I said, no more. So I don't go around telling children, you are so cute. I don't do it. Because I may be the reason a child's pride go up and the temptation that Satan could not stand when he was a perfect angel in heaven, that child will be placed in. And who was the one who placed him in? Me. Let not a mother allow her mind to be occupied with too many things. With the greatest diligence and the closest watchfulness, she must care for the little ones who, if allowed, will follow every impulse springing out of the fullness of their own practice. Now you see the counterpart of this. You see, God says, give but little notice. That doesn't mean the mother should not notice their children. You see the point? It's two different things. God is saying here, mothers, you have to be on your guard. Pay attention to your children. This is a different attention. You see the difference now? What I wanted to explain to you before so you can say and see that God is not contradicting himself when he's talking about the issue. God wants the mothers to pay attention to the children, to make sure they know what's going on with the children, as to the point that there's another quote of the Spirit of Prophecy that says, if a mother is speaking to someone else and she loses track of what the children are doing, God considers that a sin. So the attention that God wants the mothers to be is on their children, what is going on with them, their battles, their spiritual battles. But people should not be so eager to pay so much attention to children because that is the reason of pride raising and placing them in a temptation. We should not put them in because we ourselves could not even stand it. Satan couldn't. Who am I to say that I can fight that temptation that Satan couldn't even when he was an angel? It says there, if allowed, will follow every impulse springing. Okay, let me go back. With the greatest diligence and closer to watchfulness, she must care for the little ones who, if allowed, will follow every impulse springing out of the fullness of their own practice. Now, let me ask you a question. What is God saying with this last part of the paragraph? What God is saying with this part of the paragraph is this. If you allow a child to do whatever they want, they will grow. But in what category? What kind of a child he will be? He will be putting out every impulse springing of the fullness of their own practice. Meaning, look what it says. Ignorant hearts. In their exuberance of spirit, they will give utterance to noise, turbulence in the home. If you see any time in the church or at home, children that do noise, they disturb. They are not doing what is right. The only person we have to blame is who? Parents. Why? Because God says, do not allow this. It's a command to me as a father. You should not allow that. So if the children do, and I see one child doing it, I know who is the one to blame. Because God said it, not myself. Look, let's keep reading. This should be checked. Who said it? God. To who? To the parents. Then it says, children will be just as happy if they are educated not to do these things. People think that if a child runs around, jump into here, jump into there, laugh, and do many acrobatic maneuvers, this child is happy. If you have a quiet child, they said he's not happy. You see the problem in our society? That's not true. God is saying a child could be meek and quiet in spirit and still be happy. You see how twisted our society is? Let's keep reading. They are to be taught that when visitors come, they are to be and quiet and respectful. 
Now let me put it two pictures so you can see. All time picture. You have Lola, Mama, yeah? All time. And they were sitting around the parents and they were to be quiet and respectful. That's all time. New time. Mama, Lola, children are out, playing, doing all kinds of noises. They cannot control them. That's the picture today. Which is the picture God wants to see? All time picture. Question is, where did we lose it? That's the way it used to be. We don't have it today. When and how we lost it. How? Do you know? Well, God just said it. We have been allowing our children to do whatever they want, number one. We allow them to do noise and be disrespectful, to cut in conversation, to talk when they shouldn't. Children are happier when there is no discipline. Children are happier when there is discipline. Which one is the option? In the world today, this is the reality. In the world today, we believe that children are happier if they do whatever they want. To the point that in the United States is now engraved the education, educational system. Teachers cannot even contradict what the children will say or do. They say, is their expression. Let them express themselves. This is the trend in the psychological world now today. Children should be allowed to do whatever they want and express themselves whenever they want and however they want. Is that the way God wants it to be? Another reason why the schools today are not doing God's plan. Let's see it from God's Word. What does God think about this? Let fathers, mothers, and the educators in our schools remember that it is a higher branch of education to teach children what? Obedience. Do you think children today learn obedience at school? Do you think you can send your children to school and they will learn to obey? That will never happen, I can tell you. Now, if they don't know it, they will not learn it. And we see that the problem is children are not learning obedience. Who is the one to blame? Us as parents. This is clear. There's no one else. Some people get to the children 12 years old and say, you are rebellious, you are this, you are that. No, he's not. You made him like that. When God comes, the only one he's going to ask why and where is yourself. Parents. I'm talking to parents right now. Of course, I'm not saying that children, if you are grown up already 18 years old and you did not learn obedience, you can continue being disobedient and say, I have nothing to do with this. This is not my problem. No. When you are grown up, if you are so, you have to change. And you have to learn obedience which I'll tell you is not going to be easy because God himself says it's hard. Yet we have to do it. It says there, altogether too little important is attached to this line of education. Children will be happier, far happier. What is God saying? Children are going to be happier. No, no happier. Far happier. If under proper discipline than if left to do as their untrained impulses suggest. God says, never permit display of angry passions. Among the first task, number one task of the mother is the restraining of passions in her little ones. How old? How old? Babies, even babies, yes, you have to change that. Yes, mothers, if you allow that to happen once, it will happen twice. If you allow it twice, it will happen thrice. And it will keep increasing and increasing and increasing. God says that it's easier for parents to allow children to do whatever they want and not to check what they are doing or cross their will. They think that it's an easy way. Children should not be allowed to manifest anger 
they should not be permitted to throw themselves upon the floor. Have you seen this? And what does God say about that? It should not be what? Do not allow it to pass happen. Not once. Never. But how are you going to do it? How can you do it? You see, this is the problem. Medical missionary work. Do we really have medical missionary work? We don't have it. Why not? Because we don't have school for parents. Therefore, if we all want to learn true education, the first thing we have to learn is to be fathers and mothers. And we all have to do it. We all have to learn how to be fathers and mothers, even though you don't have children. Because we have to rehearse and influence to some children whenever we go, or wherever we go. We have to be accountable. God is going to ask us the influence that we did upon somebody else. The way I dress, the way I behave, the way I talk, everything is going to influence a child. And we are accountable for that. And he says there, striking and crying because something has been denied them which was not for their best wood. Now I'm going to give you an example. A lady came to a seminar I was, going, I was doing in Palawan, one of the mountains there. We spent some time there and she said, Dr. Butain, what can I do? We have heard the message already. And she said, I have heard the message, I know the problem, and my husband is allowing my children to eat junk food and to behave wrong in church and he let them do whatever they want. I want to control them, I want them to obey, I want them to eat properly, and my husband always gives them what they want. Even if I say, not this, not that, he comes and gives it to them. Now this normally happens upside down. Most of the time it's the father who wants to have the rules and the mother the one who does it. But once in a while it happens the opposite. Once in a while it happens that the mother is the one who wants to control well the children and the husband is dumb. All right, I said, I know, I was listening to her and she said, and then my husband said that the children love him. Aye, sister. Okay, let's come and talk. Number one, your husband say that the children love him, but that is not love. That is not love. You have heard the message, right? Okay, now what you, I want you to do is this. Take the message that you have heard. Show it to him from the spirit of prophecy. Use all the Bible quotes that I have given you and all the spirit of prophecy quotes I give you. Use it and teach it to him. Give it to him. No fight. Just tell him what you found. And then the next thing you are going to ask him is this. Ask him that he needs to exercise the father figure that he needs to be for the children. And then ask him one favor. Ask him one favor. Tell him, please, I ask you one time. Whenever the child wants to eat junk food, to tell him simply no. One time. Only one time. And the father accepted. I don't know how she did it. The Holy Spirit, most likely, right? And the father accepted. And I testify because I saw it. He was trying because he understood the problem at that time. And then he started trying to do it. And I saw him fighting. But then the point is, the first time he did it, he crossed the child's will. He said no to that junk food. The child kicked and slapped him in his face. Is that love? Is that love, brothers and sisters? Where was the love? It's gone. It was never love. The fact that you allow a child to do whatever they want and they love you supposedly and they like to be with you is not because they love you. It's because they know you can give them whatever they want. And once you cross their will, you will see the devil coming out of their children. I have been distressed as I have seen how many parents indulge their children in the display of angry passions. Mothers seem to look upon these outbursts of anger as something that must be endured and appear indifferent to the child's behavior. 
The children do those kind of upbursts that they do. And parents, what do we do? Nothing. And what is God's command? Never allow it. Do we obey God? If God says never allow it, and we don't do anything, is that obedience to God? Parents, we have to go in our knees tonight. And we have to ask for forgiveness. And this is the reality. We have to do it. Because it's God's command that we put a check on these things. And whenever as parents we have not do so, we have disobeyed God directly. And then it says, But if an evil is permitted once, it will be repeated. And its repetition will result in what? A habit. And so the child's character will be received an evil mode. Does God see that outbursts of passions like this is a good thing? What does he call that? An evil thing. Can you see the problem, brothers and sisters? Is our society awakened at this problem? No, we don't. We're asleep. We are blind. When to rebuke the evil spirit? I have often seen the little one throw itself and scream if its will was crossed in any way. This is the time to rebuke the evil spirit. When is the time? Right at that moment. You have to wait until the evening comes? No, God is saying when? Right then is the moment. What are you going to do? You have to obey God. What are you going to do? Do you know what to do? Do you know how to do it? I hope I can finish this topic later in the section of punishment requirements and steps so you can see. This is the time to rebuke the evil spirit. The enemy will try to control the minds of our children, but shall we allow him to mold them according to his will? Any time you allow a child to do that, you are allowing the enemy to take control of your child's mind. But we don't see that, brothers and sisters. Is there hope for us? Is there hope for us? Of course, yes. There is hope. But we have to know what to do. It says that the little ones cannot discern what spirit is influencing them. And it is the duty of parents to exercise judgment and discretion for them. Their habits must be carefully watched. Evil tendencies are to be restrained and the mind stimulated in favor of the right. The child should be encouraged and every effort to govern itself. itself. Brothers and sisters, one day I was talking to a pastor. I'm not going to tell you names. I'm just telling you the reality. I was talking to a pastor. He had a child, six months old or something. And the baby saw that the pastor pick up a wawa. Right? And the child mm, made noises, so he wanted the wawa. And the pastor did not want to give the wawa to the child. Maybe he said, maybe he's going to put it in his mouth, whatever. Either way, what reason is, I don't know. But the point is that the child kick, 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 and make noises until the pastor obey the child and gave the wawa to the child. I can tell you today, that pastor came to me asking me for counsel because he says his child is unruly. He cannot stand it. He knows it's going to hell. And he said, I want something different for my child. Can you see, brothers and sisters? Who is the one obedient? The child or the father? One day somebody said that it, somebody from Europe went to the U.S. to visit. Going back to Europe, they asked him, what was the best thing you, you, interesting thing you learned in the U.S.? He said, how obedient are the parents of the children. That's the reality of this world. How many parents today here in the Philippines are obedient to their children? Now let me ask you, if your child asks you for something and you give it to him, you are showing him that obedience can be done, but he cannot obey you. What are we allowing our children? Whose responsibility is the pastor? 
The Sabbath school? No way. It's my responsibility. Because children are children, it is okay to do all the noise they want. Yes or no? Somebody told me one day, talking about noise in the church, he said, oh, your children, don't worry about them. Let them do whatever noise they want. When they are 10 years old, then you will teach them. 61 years old lady. Is that wisdom? No way. Let's see what God says about it. I don't want to know what a 61-year-old lady wants to say. All the respect to Lolas and Mamas and old women. If you don't know, you don't know. Period. What does God think? Fathers and mothers, teach your children that they must be what? Subordinate to law. Do not allow them to think that because they are children, it is their privilege to make what? All the noise they want, especially here in the church. Well, this is not the church, but we call it so because we are worshiping the Lord today. Even here. Do not allow them to think that because they are children, it is their privilege to make all the noise they wish in the house. Wise rules and regulation must be made and enforced that the beauty of the home life may not be spoiled. Parents do their children great wrong. What? Great wrong. When? What does God say? When they allow them to scream and... Oh, 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 oh. You see the problem with our society, brothers and sisters? Do we know these things? Do we know how serious God is about these things? We don't know it. And that's why I'm praying that we can get some people to even translate these books because we need them. It's a must. It's a need. Now, I, can, I would prove it to you even from the Bible later when I go about the punishment part, but we need these books. They should not be allowed to be careless and boisterous. If these objectionable traits of character are not checked in their early years, the children will what? Take them with, with them. When? Look what it says. Strengthen and develop into religious and business life. What is the conclusion of this paragraph? If there is someone today that is old, has a fight, comes to the church, hear the preacher, cannot gain the victory over sin. Who was the one who taught that child that? Who was it? The parents. The number one reason for all of us spiritual life problems is our parents and God always many times accused us as guilty in this point into the religious and business life children will be just as happy if they are taught to be quiet in the house teach your children meek and quiet spirit a boisterous child is not pleasing to God. It's the norm of society. It doesn't mean it's pleasing to God. But we have to know how to do it. 2 Timothy 3.15 And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scripture, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. Okay. We will stop here because we don't have more time. We will continue later about this topic.